I'm fairly new to this filmmaking business in a way. I've not really had much experience. Um, I've learned a lot in a short amount of time, but I've not made that many films compared to other people. Um, and I think I'm trying to make more content to be able to basically ch- like ch- challenge myself and look back on what I used to do and what I do now and basically teach myself how to get better every time. And I think the more I make content, the more I can look back and go, oh, this isn't right. I can, next time I should do this or the, this or that. So the reason I'm making this video is to basically go through one of my old videos, which is the first f- proper film in a way I made. By prop, I mean like I did it for a client. It was part of work experience for college. We had to do like two weeks and then one week at a garden centre uh, making a promo film. And that was like about 15 months ago, I think. Um, and I've, I think I've improved a lot since then. But I've actually, I've actually not made that much content since then um, of the same calibre. And... It's better content, I think, but it's not the same type of, you know, I've made, you get what I'm saying. Um, So I'm going to go through the video that I made 15 months ago. Um, And this was filmed on my Canon 700D, which you're looking through now, but it was filmed on the 18 to 55 kit lens, which is awful. Um, This is the 17 to 50 Sigma 2.8, which is great. But I've not really... um, looked back on it much and from like a like a critical perspective and not really analysed it and I think it's important for me to do that to basically look at things that I might have missed um, or I'm not aware that are bad but they are bad so next time I make something similar to this I can improve it and I, and I have made another promo film since then but I think I should basically analyse this and see what I could improve. So, that was a long enough intro. Let's get into it. So, this was... Yeah, I'm just going to get into it. I'm not going to explain too much about the technical part of it. We'll go into that later, so... We made this garden centre f- about 41 years. So, from the start, this scene here, it's quite... bland. Like, there's nothing to it. It's a sign on the floor. <laughs> like... Made this garden centre. It's not very... To- appealing in a way and I, th- I feel like but first of all there's this crack sign on the floor with a rock in front of it i have been passed and i have put the sign on the wall again <laughs> which i think it's meant to be um due to the screw hole which probably just fell down but i feel like i should have either i mean I, obviously i wanted to start off you know with about the name of the place far- as the opening set title but i'm sure there was another sign that said vector nurseries or because it's on the floor, I could have just moved it in front of a nice background, plants. How are people watching going to know where the sign's meant to be? So I should have just moved it. Um, this is from like you know a a a like attention to detail scene. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but um, this isn't like anything technical. But it should be just in terms of it setting the scene. It should be moved somewhere else. Um, or find a better sign because obviously it's not great condition. About forty-one years ago. And then it's quite juttery. Um, I wasn't using a fluid head. I was using a normal tripod, which did have quite a smooth head, but it wasn't fluid head. Um, and I vaguely remember this opening sequence. I set the camera to um, twenty-four. F- no, I was filming. I think I filmed it in the lower frame rate than I should have done. I have got to turn it back to normal, but that's one of those things, isn't it, really? Uh, and it's quite dark. Like it's, you can tell it's we using manual exposure. This was, no, sorry, automatic. This was using the, 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 the P mode on the Canon, so it was using, like, um, exposure compensation. So it, like, this starts off quite dark. The, I know it's because they're fading slightly, of... but it changed the exposure halfway through. Basically, um, about forty-one years ago, and then it's probably autofocus, I think, as well. Blue- so that doesn't help for video, especially moving things like that. I should have. This is thing. I, I I had this camera for like a month <laughs> when, when when I filmed this. I, don't, I wasn't really sure how it works and stuff. So th- this blue this bell, that bowling green. 
Um, right. Obviously, very overexposed. Um, I did use the compensation dial, um, but it should be manual. If it was now, I would have found it manual um, for this scene anyway. Not everything has to be manual. Um, some stuff can be automatic or compensation, especially if you're doing quick short sh- shots. But when you've got time to get a scene perfect, why not put it in manual? And I had time, so, you know, so they are exposed. Um, but it's a good opening shot. It basically guides the viewer into the garden centre. It sets a scene. It's like, oh, this is nice. I like the arch where I like the frame in a frame type of thing. Um, it, it it works in terms of like setting a scene. That that does work. Should, I should move move the trolley maybe, <laughs> uh, and the basket. But apart from that, it it's fine. Um, so yeah, that's quite good. Another point. And they close the bowling green. They put it over. That audio. Um, this was filmed using this mic, um, the SM58. Um, but it was quite far away from him. I should have put it closer. Well, the reason I put it far away is because I was actually recording his face at the time, and I wanted out of shot. But if I knew I wasn't going to use his face in the end, I would have put it closer to him, and then had the audio a bit louder and made the music. Well, months. And then a tiny bit louder because it's quite quiet. It's turned up now on VLC. It's got like 111%, and it's turned up on the system volume too, so you can hear it. But when you're listening on loudspeakers, like not headphones, you can barely hear the audio at the start. You can just hear his voice. So if I had his voice louder, I could have the audio louder. Obviously, I could turn his voice up in editing, and I think I, I did do that, but you just can't hear him properly. Um, so yeah. Um, they put it over to allotments. But, you know, it, it's just one of those things, and, yeah. And then, when the allotments men give it up, it became a scrap heap. People were using it as a shortcut from the... Uh, um, bit juttery, like I said, because the tripod's not brilliant. Scrap heap. This is a bit... Maybe I should have gone from this, you know, filming from the sun side. And then like filmed it and then lowered down the exposure. I don't know. Um it's not too bad though, it's a bit in the foul I should probably should have really gone from the bottom up. Because yeah, you know, the big reveal of the top type of thing. Um men yeah. give it up, it not became too bad. a scrappy. I'm quite ill at the moment by the way, so my voice sounds quite croaky. Um <laughs> that's why people were using it as a shortcut from the I was is it back. This shot's fine. This is used art, um, manual focus People for were that. Using it a cut from the houses at back. Still think it was auto comp- um, auto exposure, <coughs> but it's not bad. It's a bit a bit like it, it's not sharp because I had the aperture like step down to. I think it's like for the minimum it can go. Um, the more the most open it can go. Even sorry. Um, but it's a kit lens that is not very sharp, and when you open, when you have an open aperture on a kit lens, it's not going to be sharp. So yeah. And it was in f- very poor condition. But it's a good shot. I like it. It's a bit long, but I mean, I actually made the plants move on purpose to make it, you know, give some action. And we lived long. in the little end terrace house, and I looked through the bedroom window. So I'm not sure what to think of the of the, the, of the light rays. And I looked through the bedroom window. I think I like it. I think. And saw. Um. Yeah, a bit of exposed again. It's a sunny day. It's hard. I'm filming into the sun. There's not much shade in that place. Obviously, I'm filming the clock, which is in the shade, with the sun in the background, which is never good. Um, but it's just one of those things, isn't it? Um. Like, I think the main mode of story is manual exposure would be what I'd do now, but I didn't know how to use it then, so you can't really blame me. Um, so, yeah. What well, just looked like a tip. And me and my wife, who's passed away now, 22... This is a good shot. One thing with the audio too, this was actually like a half an hour long con- like conversation that I've like split up, like spliced together to make a conversation. Um, that's probably the best part of the film that I'm most proud of because it's quite hard trying to make it sound all one without too many gaps and stuff. <coughs> I'm dying. But that 
why it, that's worked out well, I think. Next shot, this was filmed yeah, in... Yeah. I think this was filmed in 67, 20... Because this is camera, you can film in 24 FPS and 30 FPS, 1080, and 67, 20. This was 67, 20 um, to get the slow-mo. And obviously, I slow-moed it down to... Then I went, when I exported it, it was put back to 24, so it's like half the speed. Two years ago. Or something like that, I can't remember. Son, not to it, it, that, that works. Little it's quite a good for a kit lens, actually. All through the wall um, and started tarrying it up. It took us about... But again, it's a bit long, but... I don't know, it's hard. Six years. Then we started uh, growing plants. And then it just got on... So I mean with the... Auto focus then we started uh, growing plants. It does. I don't mind pointing. And then it just got on. It does a small and on little and on and then pulling it out. It's just one of those things. Also, one comment I got from and someone um, it just got was that I should and on re and on. be revealing the top of these. Like when I'm panning up, I just go up, and then I stop. <laughs> I, I I just cut to the next clip, and there's no like reveal. So like the clock one at the start, that was like. Not the, the totem pole one. Cut I go, the, I start from the I top. I should be going me. to the top. People. Um. It, up. it took us about six years. So then yeah. we started. Uh. Center the frame. Uh, I do too much in this film too. So I wasn't really aware. Well, I was aware of the rule of thirds, but I didn't use them. <laughs> um. I mean, it works for some stuff like that. That opening scene with the fence in the middle. Center the scene works here. But for this, maybe, you know, on the on the right or left third. Growing plants. I mean, it's symmetrical, but it's not really symmetrical because, I don't know, it's... Yeah. Ill, and then be. it just got on and on and on. And then... My son but this work's been symmetrical. And became of age, and it's just kept on going till... There's nothing wrong with this one, really. We're here today. The little... Uh, Whip pad, is it called? The the whip pan between these two. That I like it, I think. Here today. Does that work then? But I did it again here. And it, the cut is as obvious and you can't tell. Um I should have put more time and effort into actually doing the whole overlapping thing and editing and then putting the blur in and but but I didn't. The reason I did it was because I'm gonna do plants. Then I throw something saying more plants. Like plants, more plants, but like, it, I don't know, it's, it beats me. Um, that's a bit, no, it's not too bad actually. Of ex uh, not exposed really, it's just in the shade and it's the light highlight bits, it's a bit. <coughs> focus pull, that's fine. Um, I got into a phase of like doing focus pulls and everything, and it's like when you learn one new technique and you just overdo it every single time. And the focus pulling was my thing in the past year. Uh, I kind of gone away from it now um, because it's just overused. It's great for this. I mean, the issue with this is it's like it just is just. I think it's pulling from the. It's not. It's just pulling from blurred to in focus, and a focus pull really should be shifting focus. So you've got something here. Something there. Can you see my hands? Yeah, I don't know. You get you get like something thing yeah, there you go. Something I can't see my hands, there you go. Basically you just switch between focus of two things, so one close and one further away. This is just f switching from thinner being in focus, because it's not into a plant being in focus, but it works. <coughs> the artwork, if you won't call it artwork. That, the figures, they're not perfect. See, I cut off just before the top then, on that, on that scene. It's not great. That, the figures, they're not perfect. They're not... It's a bit, a bit over... I don't know, it's not even that... It's not over... It's like... Just not... It wasn't an ideal day, if it was just sunny everywhere. Um, I like... It'd be nice if it was like hazy sun. A bit overcast, so it was, wasn't, wasn't like pure sun. Um, obviously, I'm filming these highlights into the shadows, it's not not fantastic. Um, see, reflectors would have, would have been great for this, but I didn't have any lights at all, so. Causes are out of sync and 
their arms are too long and that, you know what this I mean? It's fine. But I mean, a bit exposed here, but. They look like. If you, if you can do all that bit of the frame from right down here, it's not too bad. That what the air, you know what I mean? Count every face. You might count. See. The little focus shift there with the auto, auto, auto focus. Count 70 manual, yards. I could have done manual there. There's no reason why I couldn't use manual there, I just didn't. But you're not counting them all because there's too many. This, 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 this one's good. You're not seeing them. You're not seeing them. I, I just like it. <laughs> it's like you're not seeing You're not seeing them. Yeah. Not uh, that's fine. For, for a non fluid head tripod, that all. was fairly smooth. Is that handheld? You'll not see them. You'll not see them all. Probably just a wobbly tripod, I don't know. Oh, it might be the entire. I think I stabilised that one actually in post. So it's. Well, because the whole it's too many. Thing. You'll not see them. You'll not see them yeah. all. The entire. This. Where did I learn it from? Craig Adams. Oh. He did. Um, one of the wedding films, a from behind a wall into focus. That's it, like he he did like from the bride behind the wall to the groom in the room, but the two separate clips and he used a black wall as a transition point. The entire premise did this, is here. Kind of. It's never had anything bar. It kinda works. Obviously it works better with a with a slider or a or a gimbal. But for handheld, it's not too bad at all. You'll not see them. You'll not see them all. <coughs> the entire premise is here. It's never had anything bar. And all these bits of things you see here, little games and that. They're all good. That's not too bad for a non-fluid head. I was just working very basic shots with panning, basically. Um, one thing I like doing now is because I've got a good, a better lens that's actually stabilised. I mean, this was stabilised, but I was good at doing handheld then. You actually can get some good handheld shots if you're steady and you hold your camera right up to your body and use your body like a stabiliser. Um, you can go like into stuff, um, but I just stuck with pans. Um, I think keeping it simple is the best thing for this. Um, yeah. Even the pew in the church was given. We made a peace tree, Kyle, my son made a peace tree. Now that's a good focus pull, focus shift, shifting, pull, pull, yeah, you get me, because yeah. obviously I'm going for the candle up to the thing, and this is one of those scenes where it actually took time to doing it, because I actually, we made you know, I moved the candle onto, this This is handheld, only reason it's handheld is, because I was using the candle on top of the tripod uh, to make it the right level, um, if I had something else, I probably would have done it, um, you know, on tripod, but I think it works quite well actually. Um, but I actually set the scene for this one, so I lit the candle, put it on the um, peace tree, move things about a bit to make it, you know, so I can do the oh, shift. Oh, made a peace tree. Started taking it. <coughs> Same with this, the move of the sign. Like as 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 the day went on, I got more comfortable moving things about. Um, kept going, said, to my never be scared of like moving things about. That's one thing I do now is I like just move something <laughs> and often forget to put it back but just you know cheat it there's no harm doing that my dearest brother alfred and i thought this is not a joke this is not focus little bounce bounce focus little alfred and i thought this is not like joke. shakes this a bit with the, with the focus and then obviously manual would be better yeah. um i like the little sound um the diegetic sound, I don't know what it's, yeah. Um, so it's like, just adds a nice little transition, so it's Double like. Thing, yeah, yeah. I always forget whether it's called a J cut on L cut, but the one where you hear the sound in the previous clip. I, I'm going to have to have a bit of a thing, yeah, yeah. See, the, so when it's panning up, you can still hear the bell very slightly ring, and then it goes into the bell. Um. We have a visitor's book in our little church. I found that if somebody leaves the comment, I was going to do a focus pull here. I found that that's why it goes slightly out of focus at the end. Um, but whatever, obviously it overexposed through the holes. But somebody leaves whatever. a comment, God. The next person. <laughs> this shot, right? 
I'll show it to you first. Hello to man management would probably do the same. It's think beautiful little yard in mysterious. Enjoyed it. I like it. What I did was, you actually think it would be like a, would probably a jib same. or think a stabiliser. Beautiful. It's actually the tripod um, had one of those handles on that you can crank up to raise up the, the arm, the columns, the centre column thing. So I used that like dead slowly to make this jib type of effect and it worked quite well actually. I found that if somebody leaves a comment, good. The next person out of See, it's quite management would steady. probably do the same. It's think beautiful little yard in mysterious enjoyed it. Another drip. I don't deep focus pull here. That works well. Um, it's not too bad. Why not get a lot of macro over B? Um, handheld, so it's fairly stable. Handheld. Um, I like that one with the water. I think. See, the, the, these were all like towards the end of the day, towards the end of the shoot, and I actually learned how to use a camera by then, so they're a bit better in terms of exposure. Dog, you can't complain. But, but yeah, it's steady. I think it's got stabilised in post, but it looks quite stable for me. Um, so it's good enough. Um, now one thing I got told I should have done maybe, not by the person who made it for, but just by general feedback, is including the, the guy who's talking at the end. And uh, I could have done, yeah. I think it adds to the suspense of oh, who's this guy, he sounds so cool. Not cool, but I'm not saying he's cool. <laughs> I'm not saying he's not cool, he's cool. But he's like, he's got like a, such like a unique expression in his voice and unique personality that people almost want to know, oh, who is he? We have to go now and see him. But if I put him in the video, it might have spoiled it and been like, oh, that's him. Nice to know. <laughs> but I feel like not including him is making people actually want to go and visit the garden centre. Because obviously, as you've probably seen from the film, it's more than a garden centre. It's more like a little like wonderland behind a fence in a council estate. That's literally what it is. But it's like literally in the, in the middle of like an estate somewhere. But it's just magical almost when you go in. Um, and that's the type of feeling I was trying to get from the video. Um, but again, I could have finished off with the dog on his knee, you know, like gone into him or gone out of him stroking the dog on his knee. It'd be quite a nice ending that, but if I do it again, I might do that, you know, but obviously this kind of like links back to the start with this spinning thing. It's now ending on, um, win. <laughs> I think it actually always ends on win because they can wait on the bottom, but yeah, um, so it links back to the spinning thing at the start. This back, bedroom, thing. About my son that. Became of age. But I, put it, I bring it back here. <coughs> yeah. Um, filmed by James Hooton. And then I just do a little fade out. It's fine. And then it just got the address, which I'm probably going to blur out. Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not blurring out. It's fine. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, um, yes, that's that is it really. Um, I like it; it's good. Oh, the bowling green. They put it over to allotments, and then when the allot yeah, it's good. Men give it, it does up, work. It became a scrap heap. Pe I think, like I've said, the audio could be a bit. And once it gets in, it's a bit louder. It's 70 yard. It's fine. Um, I got the audio inspiration from a video that Alex Brooks, if you know him, um, on YouTube, he used for the this coffee house thing he made for. So I just kind of like ripped, like ripped it off. I'm not even sure if it's like, you know, copyright free or anything like that. It's probably not. But, or he's, he's probably paid for it. I have not paid for the license, but, but that's not an issue, I'm sure. They can take whatever revenue they want from the video, but yes, um, that's it. So yeah, um, 
the most important thing is looking back on your old videos um, and doing what I've done then. Because obviously the main thing I've learned is exposure, which I do most of the time now. I try and get it right. Um, audio, I'm getting better at. Um, my variety of shots, which I need to work on, it's hard because... I've not got a... Well, you don't need a stabiliser. And now that I've got a stabilised lens, I can do more. I've done, like... Wait, I've done three... Three? Three more... I want to say proper films since this. I did one for my coursework for media in college. Which is, like, a, a fictional film. Like, a narrative-based one. Uh, sorry, the camera um, stopped recording for some reason. What I'm saying is... Um, just... Basically critique your films um and yeah <laughs> it's not it's not a hard thing to do um and i'm going to try and do it more my aim is i've made like so the four videos four big videos if you like including this one since i've been doing this like as a proper hobby um but now like it's like 15 months since i made this in the next 15 months i want to try and make like 15, 20 proper, like proper projects that I'm proud of. It might not happen, but now I'm doing this like at university as well. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to, you know, do more of this stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you find some stuff helpful, apart from all I've talked about is exposure and focus. Um, but it's just interesting to see. Um, check out some other videos in terms of films I've done. Two are on my channel. Um, this one and the um, another promotional video I made. Um, and my most recent video is the one about the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus mic um, microphone, which is um, a good microphone. So check it out. Uh, I wish I had it when I was doing this video, uh, when I was doing this Garner Centre thing. It might have made me use a bit more audio. Um, I was just using the onboard camera audio apart from when I was doing the interview with this microphone um, but yeah um, thank you for watching um, and keep on making films and stuff like that <laughs>